Good morning. How's my signal's quality? Morning, Alex Giles. Shalom, brother. Tommy Salter. Shalom. 5x5, five five. roger that, Infantry 91. In which case, we'll go to screen share. Move on over to here. There we go. Very good. Can you see what I see? Yes, you can. 10 May 21. We're going to talk about um, the exponential increase in firearms violence during the Joe Biden presidency thus far. As if that's a coincidence today. Uh, bear with me. <clears throat> I'm um, extra ornery today. So, anyway. 10 May. Reports of gun violence are peppering the news. A shooting at a Phoenix hotel killed one and injured seven. Several people were injured during a shooting in Florida. And in Idaho, a teacher de-escalated the situation and disarmed a 6th grade girl with a gun before anyone was killed. After a shooting in Times Square injured two women and a 4 year old girl, mayoral candidate Andrew Yang, he of the universal basic income uh, position, said, The truth is that New York City cannot afford to defund the police. You think so? New Yorkers are concerned about rising rates of violent crime, pretty crime, street homelessness, end quote. Many of the shootings reported appear to have arisen out of conflict, <coughs> such as an argument between multiple people. One side of the political spectrum wants to blame firearms, but it is vital to note that it's been an exceptionally long year with an astronomical increase in mental health issues. Scientists have tracked the surge in depression and anxiety from 11% to 42% within a single year. <coughs> Homemade gummy bears. This is having a huge impact on the social sphere, affecting the decisions of both children and adults after they've spent far too long sequestered at home, stressed and pressured under crushing mandates, strangling their family, finances and social lives. People have lost access to jobs, education, friends, family and freedom. They've been threatened with fines and imprisonment should they not toe the line of continuous mandates as they live in fear of an unseen deadly enemy. Now these of course meaning the general public, not us of the Bear Nation, because we like to throw two middle fingers up to all of that bullcrap. Yeah, if we've still been allowed to have a live stream, that's good. That's lovely. Let's go over here to our show notes. Uh, Rigby School Shooter. So, and uh, I'm sure many of y'all have heard already, Sixth grade girl accused of opening fire at Idaho Middle School, wounding three. This is from 7 May, CBSnews.com. Um, sixth grade girl brought a gun into her Idaho Middle School, shot and wounded three people before she was disarmed by a teacher. Authorities said Thursday, two students and a custodian were shot in their extremities and were expected to survive, officials said. Jefferson County Sheriff Steve Anderson said the girl pulled a handgun from her backpack and filed, fired multiple rounds inside and outside of Rigby Middle School in the small city of Rigby, about 95 miles southwest of Yellowstone National Park. A female teacher disarmed the girl and held her until law enforcement arrived and took her into custody, authorities said. So, over here, uh, from eastidahonews.com, we've got a picture of the sheriffs outside of the front of the Rigby Middle School. This, by the way, is why Refuge Training trains people like this, not just civilian immediate responders, but sheriff's departments and teachers to deal with things like this, because um, as much as I hate it and as gross of it, as it is, you need bleeding control in schools. Dateline Rigby. Krista Knighting, the teacher identified by law enforcement as the person who confronted and disarmed the suspect during Thursday's shooting, at Rigby Middle School, told her father she felt there was an angel on my shoulder that was telling me what to say and what to do. 
The incident began around 9.10 a.m., less than an hour after class began. During a press conference Thursday afternoon, Jefferson County Sheriff Steve Anderson said a female 6th grade student pulled a handgun from her backpack and fired multiple rounds inside and outside the school. Two students and one adult custodian sustained non-life-threatening injuries during the five-minute ordeal, all of which were hospitalized. <clears throat> In an interview with Fox News, Nighting's father, Dean Turnblom, who did not witness any of what took place, recalls in a conversation with her that night that she decided that since the shooting, it sounded like it was down the hallway to let her kids get out of the room and run out through that door and to get out of the high school. She says, and then you go run to the high school as fast as you can and don't stop or look back for nothing. Nighting saw one of the injured students in the hallway, picked him up off the ground and brought him to safety. When she did, she got blood all over her. That's going to happen in a shooting. She looked up and saw this girl standing across the hallway with the gun, Turnblom said. So she sat the boy down and told him to be quiet and to be still. And she started walking toward the girl, talking to her very calmly and telling her things would be okay. We just needed to stop and think things through a little bit and just tried to settle her down. When Nighting got close to the subject, she put her hand on the girl's arm and then she just let her hand slide down her arm until it got to the gun. When she touched the gun, the girl let go of the gun, and she took the gun, and she had her other arm around the girl, already kind of hugging her. Nighting held the suspect until a police officer came walking down the hallway and placed the student in handcuffs, Turnblum said. Well, good job to the police officer for not shooting Nighting. I hope that, yeah, there was a good bit of combo in that as well. And it goes on from there. Interestingly, uh, from newswithviews.com, Joe Biden, the mass shooting president. This is from 24 April, so it's it's already beginning to age, but the information that's in this article, at least the first couple of paragraphs, are absolutely astounding. And I would uh, challenge you to do your own homework on this. Good morning, 575 people. Appreciate y'all. By Lex Green, according to CNN, the election of Joe Biden has set off a world record of mass shooting events in the USA that the world has never seen before. That's why it would be a world record, Lex Green. Let's learn to English. With at least, quote, 147 mass shootings across the country since Joe took office, at least 45 such events in just the past 30 days, end quote. By contrast, the USA recorded just 35 mass shooting events during the four years that Donald J. Trump was president, an annual average of just 8.75 mass shootings event per year, during the Trump administration, at the current rate of events since Joe Biden took office, the USA could see as many as 540 mass shooting events in 2021 alone. That's a 6,100% increase in mass shootings under Joe Biden so far. Let's just stop and think about that a moment. So in the entirety of the Trump administration, entirety, 35 mass shootings, in the Biden administration thus far, 147 mass shootings. And let's remember that they, they the big they, have changed the way they define what a mass shooting is. And that was done with all the intentionality of skewing the statistics upward to gain more uh, control over our Second Amendment rights. Under the Obama administration. And now, interestingly, under Obama 2.0, we go from just 35 mass shooting events in the four years of Donald Trump's presidency to 147 so that's more than four times, because four times 35 is 140. So more than 4x in the, so compared to the entirety of Trump's administration, to the first, what, not even six months of the Biden administration? Now, this lovely condor, tactical, coyote tan beanie is not made of tinfoil. So I might be speaking out of turn here, but it seems to me that that's just a little coincidental for an administration that's hell-bent on taking somebody's firearms. Call me crazy, but don't you think it's just a little coincidental that the people that want to take your firearms, and this is not, not hyperbole, 
I mean, look at uh, what's his face, uh, Beta Male O'Rourke. Hell yeah, we're gonna take your AR-15s and your AK-40. First of all, you ain't gonna take shit. Good luck with that. You might be able to come get this little pink red Ryder BB gun, maybe, and that's if I let you have it. Um, next, they're on record. They know what they want to do. They've told us what they want to do. And that's fine. But what a coinky dink that now that those people are in charge again, we go from 35 mass shootings in four years to four times that in less than half a year. Like so. A 6,100% increase in mass shootings under Joe Biden so far. I'm just saying. That math doesn't seem to make sense. Do we still have a live stream? Have we been permitted by the powers that be to have a live stream? Yes, we have. <coughs> Jeff Naughty. What's up, Jeff Naughty? Donna Eads, Nicole Parrish. The Patriot Ninja is here. Roger that. Gray Mouse. Scotty Nux. What's up, Scotty Nux? Paladin one. All right. BearIndependent.com. Listen, we... um. I really try not to be the ShamWow guy of medical equipment, but you really need medical equipment. I mean, 6,100% increase in mass shootings. We just had somebody at a refuge training class on the 25th of April attended one of our classes, and the uh, that student was on their way home from work, I believe, a few days later, and was not party to but witnessed a horrendous motor vehicle accident i was able to reach in their back seat and grab the kit that they had from the training on the 25th and save that person's life by applying a tourniquet ems got there six minutes later you got 90 seconds on a femoral artery bleed before you die and this person was able to apply that tourniquet use the experience and the expertise that they learned at class, apply that tourniquet and save that person's life. Absolutely awesome. And so, if you already have bleeding control, great. Good for you. Honestly, good for you. You need it. Especially if you're a teacher these days, it's looking like. If you don't already have bleeding control, please consider us. We're an American company. We're a small business. We make our products here in America. They are guaranteed forever. If you break them, I will replace them. If you use the contents to save the life, I will replace the contents that you used when you saved that life at no cost to you. Um, almost all of our stuff is in stock right now. Ship times are low. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. We exceed military specification. We're on four continents with four branches of the armed forces. We've got 17 lives saved with our products in the last 14 months. Uh, and we cost less than... Uh, th where is this kit? Right here. The Bear Fact. This kit is $11 less than the Advanced Mimetic IFAC. It's $11 less than the Chinesium bullshit that is in the Advanced Mimetic IFAC. And this kit is purpose-built to work the March algorithm. Massive bleeding, airway, respiratory, circulation, head injury, hypothermia, and everything else. And it's made in America. And it's guaranteed forever. And it exceeds military specification. And it's $11 less than the advanced IFAC from my medic, which is a piece of shit. Yeah, I said it. I'm going to be reviewing one on camera uh, in the near future. I'm going to be doing a side-by-side -side between the MyMedic and the BearFact because they should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. Let's start with the fact that their tourniquet is a rat's tourniquet. Yeah. Yeah, absolute garbage. So, if you'd rather not waste your money, uh, please consider us. BearIndependent.com. You can just click on the store, find us there. Um... Thank you for supporting our American small businesses. Look at the stitching on this, y'all. Look at this. These are handmade. Made in America. Guaranteed forever. If you find a better kit, I want to know. If you break it, I want to know. If you use it to save a life, I want to know. <coughs> COVID's mental health toll. Uh, yeah. 
lump me in there. I'm so tired of talking about COVID. Scientists are tracking a surge in depression. Researchers are using huge data sets to link changes in mental health to coronavirus response measures. This from nature.com. Earlier in the year, 3rd of February, but what an interesting corollary. By Allison Abbott. Hey, Abbott. As the COVID-19 pandemic enters its second year, let's just question mark all of that bullshit statement. Um, especially the pandemic part right here. As the COVID-19 enters its second year, the new fast-spreading variants have caused a surge in infections in many countries and renewed lockdowns. The devastation of the pandemic, millions of deaths, economic strife, and unprecedented curbs. Shut the F up. Let's get to the data. More than 42% of people surveyed by the U.S. Census Bureau in December reported symptoms of anxiety or depression in December, an increase from 11% the previous year. Data from other surveys suggest that the picture is similar worldwide. Quote, I don't think this is going to go back to baseline any anytime soon, says clinical psychologist Luana Marquez at Harvard's Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts, who is monitoring the mental health impacts of the crisis in U.S. populations and elsewhere. You know, by the way, it occurred to me just momentarily there that um, when now in the new YouTube algorithm, uh, that if you swear, it doesn't demonetize you, but the algorithm doesn't like that because I guess nice people don't like it when you say words like bullshit, and so it doesn't promote you. So if you could go ahead and if you see any type of value in this ridiculous broadcast, go ahead and uh, click the little thumbs up button. Share this video out to people that you think need to see it. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe. And if you're not on Patreon, uh, let's just be frank with one another. What the F is wrong with you? There's 30 to 100 exclusive pieces of content per month over there. We could all sit around and bitch about YouTube, and everybody knows, boy, I like doing that. But there's 30 to 100 exclusive pieces of content over there each month. And it starts at a dollar a day. Or I'm sorry, a dollar a month or ten dollars a year. A dollar a month or ten dollars a year. And Patreon may have been, you know, a little tyranty to other people occasionally in the past. We've never had those issues. So you should check us out there. Because when I want to say things with words that come out of my face and it makes the YouTube algorithm upset. Uh, you can guarantee it's just a matter of time before YouTube unsubscribes you from this channel or shadow bans us again because it's happened multiple times already. We have a lovely graph of COVID's mental stress here. The percentage of people experiencing symptoms of depression and anxiety has surged amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Data from the Nationally Representative Survey shows. Before the pandemic, you can see we've got 10%. After the pandemic, we've got 19% reporting symptoms of depression in the UK. And in the U.S., U.S. adults reporting symptoms of anxiety and depression from 11% up to 42%. This is a good graph. You can tell somebody there has at least passing experience with Microsoft Excel that put this graph together. Uh, it's a good graph. Major events that have shaken society, such as the 9-11 terrorist attacks in New York, have left some people with psychological distress for years, says Marquez. A study of more than 36,000 New York residents and rescue workers revealed that more than 14 years after the attack, 14% still had post-traumatic stress disorder and 15% experienced depression, much higher rates than in comparable populations, 5 and 8% respectively. So the point here that Marquez is making is that this is a long-term Thing, the downstream ramifications of this lockdown and the global which is uh, bear for pandemic the global uh, has major long term effects and I I really again uh, there's no tin foil under this hat see I'm promising you there's no tin foil but um, I just find it incredibly convenient that uh, they They would stand to profit. Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Moderna, uh, BioNTech, 
GlaxoSmithKline that they would stand to benefit from long-term 42% anxiety uh, in the populace. What a, what a coincidence, right? It's just it's almost like it's almost like Biden gets elected president and gun violence jumps 6100%. Not 61% or 610%, 6100%. It's almost like there's this oligarchy that is just absolutely hell bent on getting everybody to take the jab to, you know, prevent the 99% survivability rate of the flu, I mean, global pandemic, that results in 42% of the United States having anxiety and depression, as if that's not at all profitable for the companies that produce the vaccine for the pandemic with the 99% profitability rate. Hmm. No, that would be crazy. They would never do that. I know. Shut up, Bear. Roger that. You got it. What the hell else are we going to talk about? From the Blaze Media, former FDA chief says... Now is the time to begin lifting mask mandates as aggressively as we put them in. Well, thank you for your permission, former chief. See, an interesting thing happens when you're actively trying to be independent from the system. There's this downstream effect called, I do whatever I want to do. Good morning, sweetheart. And so, do you want to say hi to the people, or you want to quietly drink your coffee away from everybody? No, I gotta leave. Oh, you do? You got work today? Oh, okay. What are we doing with the weasel? Okay, roger that. Getting back to living in the country, you do whatever you want to do. There were no <coughs> mask, mask mandates here. And uh, there was also no mass hysteria, hysteria here. In fact, at one point when the local Walmart tried to mandate that you had to have a mask on to go into the Walmart, more than 50% of the people that went into the Walmart were like, thanks, but screw you, no. And just went into the Walmart without the masks on. And guess what? Two weeks later, Walmart no longer required a mask for you to be in there. They strongly suggest, but you can strongly suggest as much as you want. I'm going to do what I feel like doing. So, you know, in that big city that you want to live in because it's convenient and close to all the things that you can't do anymore due to COVID and the cost of living has gone through the roof, um, they may have implemented mask mandates where you live. We didn't have that problem here. And also, strangely enough, we don't define quality of life or self-worth by how much our car costs or what kind of brick veneer we have on the shit house that some builder grade asshole put together for us. So instead, uh, we haven't had to deal with any of the tyranny that people in the cities and suburbs have. Scott Gottlieb, former commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration, said this week that indoor mask mandates should begin to be lifted immediately, saying vaccine efficacy means the government should relax pandemic-related restrictions. At least we're having that conversation. It can't be both. Either you're mandated, or I'm sorry, you're vaccinated or you wear a mask. Uh, not both. Also, or you've had COVID, raise your hand, and now you have the antibodies, and you don't need the vaccination, and you don't need to wear a mask. Because masks are to protect me from you, not to protect you from me, the CDC has said multiple times, not that you can believe them. And I've already had it, so I'm a superhero. I neither need a vaccine nor to wear a mask. Um, and when pressed on that, my response is generally, you can kiss my hairy white ass. In fact, Gottlieb said Thursday that if the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention does not begin encouraging the lifting of mask mandates, they will lose, quickly lose credibility. 
Gottlieb, I got bad news for you. That's already happened. Quote, I think we should start lifting these restrictions as aggressively as we put them in, Gottlieb told CNB CNBC host Shepard Smith. Shepard Smith always looks surprised. Whoever does his eye makeup needs to do a better job. Quote, we need to preserve the credibility of public health officials to perhaps re-implement some of the provisions as we get into next winter if we do start seeing outbreaks again. Aha, here we go. And he continued, and the only way to earn public credibility is to demonstrate you're willing to relax these provisions when the situation improves. That's what gives you the credibility to implement them <coughs> when things worsen. He's saying we got to give them an inch now so we can take a mile later. Because if you don't throw the people across the bread, they're not going to believe you when it's time to put them under some more tyranny later in the year. I.e. credibility with the CDC. That's already gone. That's been gone for a long time for me. Oh, since about March of 2020. Somewhere in there. But, uh... It's interesting what his motive here. We need to preserve the credibility of public health officials to perhaps re-implement some of these provisions as we get into next winter if we do start seeing outbreaks again. And the only way to earn public credibility is to demonstrate you're willing to relax these provisions when the situation improves. That's what gives you, gives you the credibility to implement them when things worsen. Even if vaccination rates are slowing, we're still going to continue to chip away at getting more people vaccinated. But I think these, I think that these gains are locked in and the summer looks very good. Well, thank you so much for your opinion, Scott Gottlieb, MD. Huh, the CDC under President Joe does not agree with Gottlieb. Despite finally updating mask guidance... Allowing fully vaccinated individuals to allowing fully vaccinated individuals to go outside without wearing a face mask under most conditions, the CDC still says all people, regardless of their vaccine status, should wear a mask indoors. <coughs> well, first of all, Centers for Disease Control, coming back to credibility, you don't allow me to do a damn thing. That's not how this government is set up. And the more people that realize that, the better off we would be. The farther through this pandemic we would be. You don't allow me to do anything. It's the other way around. Just so we're clear here. Now, the flip side of that is I'm not beholden to you for anything. I don't need a government paycheck. I don't want your stimulus money. I'm not on food stamps. I'm not trying to get a really sweet tax refund. I don't give a shit about any of that. I just want personal liberty which requires personal responsibility which means i can and generally do do whatever the hell i want to do i don't need the cdc's nor do i require the cdc's permission to be inside or outside with a pair of face panties on allowing fully vaccinated individuals to go outside without wearing a face mask are you kidding me listen to the sound of that if you call yourself an American and a patriot and you hear a phrase like that and you don't instantly have a small aneurysm and your blood pressure spikes to about 180 over 130 and your fists clench and you're ready to just start punching holes in the brick wall you're doing it wrong the CDC is going to allow you to go outside bull bull honky right wheeze Dad, um, what? I thought you were going to go and check out what stuff I packed. I was, but not yet. Because we got to go on a picnic later, right? High five. <laughs> Still got a live stream? Still got a live stream. Imagine that. 1,200 people are here. What's wrong with y'all? <sighs> Fauci says it's quite possible seasonal mask wearing will become permanent in America. It's also quite possible that it won't. But a picnic. Here we see the High Grand Lord Wizard of the <laughs> Lizard People, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Anthony Shoot. Fauci. Shoot. Who is very much so a do-as-I-say, not-as-I-do type of air quote 
leader, we like to call those people dictators, from Breitbart.com. Fauci, quite possible seasonal mask wearing <coughs> will become permanent in America. The National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Disease. It's interesting how you lump those two things together. Allergy and Infectious Disease. Director Anthony Fauci said on NBC's Meet the Press that it's quite possible Americans will wear masks seasonally to stop the spread of respiratory-borne viruses. It's also quite possible that no, the F, we won't. Anchor Chuck Todd said, let's get to mask wearing. At what point can we stop wearing masks outside? <laughs> Let's ask your government daddy at what point you don't have to wear a piece of cloth over your face outside. At what point, if vaccinated people, do you take the masks off? Is the mask going to be something we have with us in a seasonal aspect? Fauci said, you know, that's quite possible. I think people have gotten used to the fact that wearing masks, clearly, if you look at the data, diminishes respiratory disease. Clearly it doesn't, bro, because some of us actually look at the data. You know, we've had practically a non-existent flu season this year. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's an interesting point to bring up. We went from 33,000 deaths from the flu last year to 12 this year, but suddenly everybody's dying of COVID. That's <coughs> interesting. But I can't wait for this video to get banned, by the way. I'm going to get all the little labels. I like the time that one time when I got that I was a Q QAnon misinformation. That was a good day. That was a good day. You know, we've had practically a non-existent flu season this year, said Fauci, merely because people were doing the kind of public health things that were directed predominantly against COVID-19. The Australians, during their winter, same thing. They had almost new flu, no flu, largely due to the things including mask wearing. So it is conceivable that as we go on a year or two or more from now, that during certain seasonal periods when you have respiratory-borne viruses like the flu, people might actually elect to wear masks to diminish the likelihood that you'll be spreading those respiratory-borne diseases. Also, people might not, A, because they have testicles, and B, because they have immune systems, and C, because you don't get to tell me what I have to do. That's not how this government works. And so if you, you dear listener are the type of cuck that likes to sit around and wait for the government to tell you what you may and may not do, Fauci now suggests that you should seasonally wear masks. I, on the other hand, am not, and uh, I like to enjoy my personal freedoms and personal responsibilities, including staying healthy, says the guy smoking a cigar at 8.38 Central Time in the morning. And I'd venture to say... This wonderful Robusto is probably safer than wearing a mask that hasn't been cleaned over and over again. From The Blaze, speaking of masks, well, you met. Oh, the masks coming from China have little worms in them? Yeah, some company in Denmark did a study on them. Uh huh. And, like, looked at them under a microscope, uh -huh. and they had, like, Creatures that is the spikes. That is the grossest thing I've ever heard. In the mask. And I will 100% never wear those, as if it was an option before. No. <coughs> UMass Amherst honor students suspended for not wearing masks off campus while outside. Parents ready to fight. Oh, good. It's good that they're not. Now they're ready to fight. Quote: It's been devastating. Our Belinda has been so shocked over the reaction to hear their faces have been whited out. That's also racist, isn't it? Very racist. Three UMass Amherst honor students have been kicked out of the house, have been kicked out of the school because they were seen in a photo without masks when they were off campus and outside. The freshman students will reportedly lose their course credits and tuition over the maskless photo that was posted on social media. I would got, I would find the most bulldog attorney I could find, and I would sue UMass Amherst for theft by deception and fraud for a couple billion dollars per student per incident. That's what I would do. And, you know, and I'd have a pact amongst the three of us. 
Two of us are going to settle out of court, and we're going to take that, you know, two billion each, and we're going to split it up into one point three three billion per head, um, so that everybody's covered. And then the third of us is going to fight it all the way in public court, all the way to the Supreme Court, if possible. That's what I would do. I would find just some absolutely just ridiculous, headstrong attorney, and I would sue the ever-loving pig snot out of UMass Amherst. Uh, because this has nothing to do with schooling. UMass students have been kicked out of school because they were seen in a photo without masks when they were off campus and outside. Reportedly lose their credits. The students' parents are ready to fight the university's decision. The three female students posed for a photo while at an off-campus party that was held outside in March. The photo posted to Instagram were reportedly sent to UMass Amherst officials who then suspended the three students. There was a photo sent to the administration of these girls outside, off campus, on a Saturday. Kristen, the mother of one of the suspended students, said this is why they lost a whole semester of their schooling. RJ, the father of another suspended student, said his daughter did everything right, adding she was valedictorian and class president of her high school. The students were immediately moved out of an on-campus housing and forced to return home to attend remote classes while they appealed their case, according to WCVB-TV. The parents said the three students lost their appeals. The students were kicked out of their current distance learning courses and were prohibited from taking their finals, which was a major academic and financial ramifications for the families. The students were forced to forfeit the entire semester and $16,000 tuition that was already paid. The parents said the school would not refund the tuition. So, yeah, I would, I would be suing the dog snot out of these people. I would also not be sending my children to college anymore, to university. It's not worth the, the money for a fancy piece of paper. See, when you go to a fancy school, or when you go to school in general, information is now commoditized. You can take, in a four-year uh, four degree, just drop somebody off in the library and... They could stay there every day, all day, every day, for four years, and not read a tenth of the books that are in there. We also have this thing now called the internet, where information is available to you at your fingertips. So really, what you're getting out of that four-year process that you're paying a lot of money for, the upside of this, is the networking that one does, and the vetting process of the school that allows you to join in the first place. And so, if you say, oh yes, I graduated from Yale... You're trading on the name of Yale, so that when people want a Yale graduate, they know that you're a Yale man, and that's what you're paying for. But that's losing its importance day by day by day. No, I don't give it. In fact, when I see people who are like that, I run the other direction. I don't want anything to do with you. I don't want anything to do with you. Because you live in a world like this, where it's okay to drop a dime on three people who are outside partying without masks on on a Saturday away from the campus to then get them removed from said campus. It's ridiculous. Absolute waste of money. And apparently a snapshot in time of where we are as a nation. And the article goes on and on from here with more ridiculousness. You got links to all of this in the YouTube description as well as on Patreon. Uh, let's see, what time is it? Been doing this for a while, haven't we? Total time on air thus far? I don't know. I can't see it. <clears throat> 1,400 people on. Bless y'all. Listen, if you're in or around Tallahassee, Florida, uh, we got to stop the bleed class going on in Tallahassee right here. <clears throat> There's a morning class and an afternoon class. That 395 covers our cost to travel to come there and get you. It covers the cost of the four-hour class. It also covers the cost of the bleeding control kit. Dad, do you think this is cute? I think that's wonderful, but I'm in the middle of something right now, okay? I got eight stickers. Eight? You want to high-five about it? All right, run along. Go play in traffic. You let me hang in that time? All right, toodles. Uh, so it covers our cost of travel and it also covers your bleeding control kit that you retain so you'll take home chest seals tourniquet pressure bandage 
uh, nasal pharyngeal airway, blah, 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 that's yours to keep uh, in the performance of the class so that you can use force multiplication to teach all the people around you how to not bleed to death and die as well. You'll be taught the March algorithm, massive bleeding, airway, respiratory circulation, head injury, hypothermia, and everything else. And also, interestingly, at this one class, myself and my wife will be there. And um, the world-famous prepper author, Angry American, and his wife will be there, both in the morning and the afternoon class. So if you want to come hang out, you know, maybe uh, smoke a cigar in the parking lot, share stories, commiserate, praise the Father, whatever floats your boat, we'll be there all damn day. All day. And so uh, an angry American will be in one of the classes. Yeah. So, if you want to come hang out, awesome. That's Tallahassee, Florida. We've also got classes in Paola, Kansas, and Moore, Oklahoma. I can never remember what the hell Paola, Kansas is by. Is it by uh, Wichita? What? Let's look it up. Paola, Kansas. Paola, Kansas. Let's see what we got here. It is by Kansas City. There you go. It's by Kansas City, southwest of Kansas City. There you go. So, stop the bleed classes near Kansas City, as well as more Oklahoma, which is by Oklahoma City. So, be sure to check those out for all your bleeding control needs in the ridiculousness that is today's day and age. Bless you, brother. Thank you so much. I was just handed a Balmoral, Connecticut by Brother Dixon, who is heeding y'all's words and is actually working on Under the Shoot Productions, which will be a $5 Patreon channel where he will tell you army stories of destroying Germany with tanks while reviewing guns and smoking cigars. So when that comes, I will <laughs> be sure to drop a link and let you know. Later, Later bro. Uh, speaking of cigars, Chaffiot Collection is an awesome company um, that uh, they make really good cigars. Yeah, they're a little on the expensive side, but believe me, they are worth the price per stick and their mission statement is awesome. They are dedicated to eradicating uh, human sex trafficking. So um, if you want to support a good company and smoke a good stick and help contribute to the eradication of human trafficking, check out chaffiotcollection.com. you got links in this to all the descriptions. Grindstoneministries.com. If you want to help us kick Satan in the testicles day by day, you can visit GrindstoneMinistries.com. Uh, we are building a restoration facility for juvenile trafficking victims to both rescue these people from the grievous situations that they find themselves in and then raise them up uh, in the way that they should go so they will not depart from it when they are older. And in the process of this, break generational curses and give these kids a biblical covering because they're essentially orphans that have been sold as products for sex. And that makes me so mad that I just want to rip people's throats out with my bare hands. And so we are doing what we can to combat that. And that is Caleb House, our restoration facility. And so if you'd like to stay abreast of information for that, you can click the new sign up button now. You can click the donate button now if you'd like to contact their administrators on how to send a donation or provide a like kind donation. Uh, you can use the contact form down here below. We will be ideally breaking ground this year on Caleb House. And so we'll be looking for tradespeople uh, for um, in kind donations, basically labor and materials for plumbing, electrical framing, concrete blah 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 and yes our architect is working up the precise uh, scope right now so get with us you can use this contact page down here and that's the show y'all I appreciate y'all I'm very thankful for y'all y'all and um, I'm a bounce have a blessed day Baron Nation Shalom